tribes across the United States. In this video, you will learn about the many Native American tribes across the United States. There are 566 federally recognized tribes in our country. These tribes have many similarities, but also many differences. All of the tribes lived off the land and natural resources around them. However, they had very different types of housing, clothing, food, and transportation. Southwest. There weren't a lot of animals in the desert, so the Native Americans of the Southwest didn't often hunt for food. Instead, they were farmers. One of the most important foods they grew was maize. They grew 24 different types of corn. They also grew beans, squash, melons, pumpkins, and fruit. They also gathered pinion nuts, cacti, century plant, screw beans, mesquite beans, acorns, berries, and seeds. The men of the Southwest wore breech cloths or short kits. Women wore knee-length cotton dresses that were fastened at the woman's right shoulder, leaving her left shoulder bare. When the people of the Southwest would hunt. They hunted wild turkeys, deer, rabbits, and antelope. They also raised sheep and goats. Southwest Native Americans lived in adobe homes. These houses had many levels in them and were made from clay and straw bricks. They were cemented together with adobe. The Hogan was a home built by the Navajo people of the Southwest. They used wooden poles for the frame and covered it with adobe mixed with grass. The Great Plains. The men of the Great Plains wore dresses and short leggings. Their slip was the most common style of dresses. Men wore shirts, beach cloths, and full length leggings. Ponchos were worn over shoulders for added warmth. They lived in a tall cone like structure made from hides. The teepee, it was waterproof and weather hardy, but pine teepee poles used to make the teepees were precious because wood was scarce. Deer, moose, and elk along with wolves, coyotes, lynx, rabbits, gophers, and prairie chickens were hunted for food. Buffalo was by far the main source of food. They also collected berries that were eaten, dried, and fresh. Southeast. Most people of the Southeast lived in the wattle and daub houses. They were made by weaving river cane, wood, and vines into a frame, then coated the frame with plaster. Tricky homes are used primarily in Florida by tribes like the Seminole Indians. Chicky houses were made of thick posts supporting a flat wooden platform raised off the ground. They hunted turkey and wild hogs, but deer was the most important. They also grew things such as corn, hominy grits, tomatoes, potatoes, squash, and beans. Women in the southeast wore deerskin tops, skirts, and moccasins. Men wore deerskin loin with clothing in the summer and added leggings, shirts, and robes in the winter. The Northeast. The most important animal to the eastern woodlands hunter was the white-tailed deer. They also hunted raccoon, bear, squirrel, beaver, moose, seal, caribou, and whale. Some groups grew maize, beans, and squash, along with collecting edible wild plants. Groups along the coast and lakes also hunted sea mammals and fished for cod, trout, salmon, and smelt. They would also collect shellfish and mussels from the ocean. The people of the Northeast lived in primarily long houses. These houses were very long with raised platforms inside, creating two floors into the homes. Wood screens divided the long houses into separate rooms because many families lived in them together. They also lived in wigwams. This style of housing was made from woven mats and birch bark that covered poles. They were good homes for people who lived in one place for a few months at a time. 
Because the Northeast has many different weather patterns, the clothing of the Northeast Native American depends on the season. In warm weather, most men wore skirt, cloths, and no shirt. Women would wear skirts and leggings and tops. In colder weather, men and women would wear fur parkas. The plateau. People of the plateau mostly hunted deer and caribou as a source of food. Some more experienced hunters hunted bear and mountain goat. They also hunted smaller animals for furs and food, such as coyote, fox, raccoon, marten, weasel, beaver, marmot, and hare. While the Plateau people were skilled hunters, the majority of their food came from the local rivers and lakes. The single most important food to the survival of the Plateau people was the Pacific salmon. They would also gather berries, roots, and fall for food and medicine. The summer shelter for the Plateau people was usually above ground, such as teepee or tool, mat lodge. However, unlike the plains, people who covered the teepees with animal hides, the Plateau people mostly used the tool reed mats. Tool mat lodges were essentially large, oblong-shaped teepees constructed using the same materials. Pit houses were used mostly during the winter months, although some might have been used all year. A pit house was a shelter built mostly below ground with an entrance and ladder on top. The women wore skirts or dresses. Dresses were decorated with beads and fringes. They also wore moccasins. Plateau men wore shirts made of animal skin with breech cloth, leggings, and moccasins. The Great Basin. People of the Great Basin hunted large and small game such as deer, antelope, bighorn sheep, jackrabbits, pocket gophers, squirrels, and waterfowl. The nut of the pinyon pine was the single most significant food resource for the peoples of the Great Basin. They also collected roots, bulbs, seeds, grasses, and berries. The homes of the Great Basin and Indians included Hogan's. Men often wore poncho-like shirts made of skins, usually buckskin, or twined sagebrush bark. Breech cloths were worn with the shirts or alone in warmer weather. Skin or twined bark leggings were also worn. Women wore woven fiber aprons from the waist to knees that were either single, front only, or double, covering front and back. Where the resources were available, women wore skirts or full-length gowns of buckskin. Both men and women wore fur robes or blankets in the winter. Rabbit skins were the most popular furs, with the hunter skins going into just one blanket. But bighorn, antelope, and deer were also used. The Northwest. Cedar was a very important natural resource. The large longhouses that multiple families lived in were made from cedar planks. Canoes carved from a single cedar tree were used for traveling on the water. There were large canoes for ocean use and smaller canoes for river use. Clothing was also made from cedar bark. Animal fur and other natural resources such as plant fibers and bird feathers were also used. Cedar bark could be pounded and shredded until soft, then woven into capes and skirts for women, and vests and breech clothes for men. Blankets were woven on looms using yarn that was spun from the hair of mountain goats. Some tribes used the fluffy hair from white dogs. Natural dye was used to color the yarn. Tribal people often lived close to rivers and their main source of food was salmon. Villagers near the beach also had a lot of other fish like halibut, cod, and flounder, shellfish, clams, mussels, crabs, and oysters, and other sea animals and mammals such as octopus, seals, and even whales. Upriver villagers had a lot of deer, elk, and even bear meat for food. Plants were also gathered for food in all villages, such as leaves, sprouts, and berries. Washington State. There are 29 tribes in Washington State. The Olympic Peninsula. 
There are nine tribes on the Olympic Peninsula. The Quina or Quinaith. Quileut or the Quileut. Quidishtak. Macaw Nation. The Clallam or Nusclam. The Thequamish or the Thequabsh. The Skokomish or the Squoquobish. Let's learn more about the Clallam people. The Clallam people lived all across the North Olympic Peninsula. They were known to be fierce warriors. Their name even means the strong people. They had huge villages at the mouth of rivers, streams, and in safe harbors and bays. There were also large villages in foothills of the mountains, usually close to rivers or streams. There were many sources of food in the ocean, rivers, and forests, but salmon, or shanuth, was one of the main foods. Fish were always plentiful, and fishing could be done year-round. During the summer month, when the weather was good and the food was plenty, the Clallam people often packed up their families and traveled into the mountain for gathering, fishing, and hunting. When the season ended, they returned into their permanent village for the winter. Like other Northwest tribes, cedar or pot was very important to the Clallam people. This evergreen was one of the main natural resources used in their everyday lives. All parts of the tree were used to make different things. The long houses or cacao were made from cedar. Their main <laughs> mode of transportation the canoe was made from the cedar tree. One clown word for canoe is snuff. The bark of the tree can be pulled off in long strips, then used to make things like clothing, baskets, hats, and mats. When settlers began populating the area, the clown were forced to move out of their villages and find new places to live. There were many ill feelings over the way the newcomers took all of the land. In 1855, the Clallam, along with many other tribes during that time, signed treaties. Treaties are legal documents between the U.S. government and the tribes. By signing the treaties, the tribes gave up their traditional land in exchange for securing many rights. When the Clallam signed the 1855 treaty, of point no point. They ceded their lands and secured their rights to hunt, fish, and gather in their usual accustomed areas from the Hoko to the Hamahama River and into the mountains. They also secured their right to govern themselves, were promised a small payment for the land as well as food, medical, and educational support. As more and more New people began moving to this area. Life got harder for the native people. Many had already died from diseases brought by the first explorers. And many were treated unkind by the new settlers who were struggling to survive in a new area as they were trying to start a new life. Despite their many challenges, the first people have survived and became organized into the tribes that we know of today. Traditional teachings and practices are still passed on and done today, some in new ways. Historical and cultural information is still taught through stories, but nowadays is shared through modern textbooks, lessons in schools, and even videos like the one you're watching now. Today there are 566 federally recognized tribes across the United States. 29 of those are in Washington State, with 9 of them being right here on the Olympic Peninsula. The Clallam people are still a large group, but now separated into three tribes. Or the Port Gamble Clallam tribe. Or the Jamestown Clallam tribe. Lower Ella Clown Tribe. Thank you for watching this video. Now you have learned a little bit about the tribes of the United States. You also learned a little bit about the Clown people and how they lived long ago.
next a queen's heart slam. Miss Lymouth and Queer Tio Hill.